In this module, we are going to explore the iOS ecosystem and its platform architecture. We are then going to look into a few of the iOS app fundamentals and finally list down the tools required to build an iOS app. iOS is the operating system that runs on iPad, iPhone and iPod touch devices. The operating system manages the device hardware and provides the technologies required to implement native apps. The operating system also ships with various system apps such as uh, the phone, mail, safari, etc. The iOS software development kit or the iOS SDK contains the tools and the interfaces needed to develop, install, run and test native apps. At the highest level, iOS acts as an intermediary between the underlying hardware and the apps you create. Apps communicate with the hardware through a set of well-defined system interfaces and not directly. These interfaces make it easy to write apps that work consistently on devices having different hardware capabilities. The implementation of the iOS technologies can be viewed as a set of layers, which is shown in the figure. The lower layer contains fundamental services and technologies, whereas the higher la layer builds upon the lower layers and provides the most sophisticated service and most sophisticated technologies. The Cocoa Touch layer contains key frameworks for building iOS apps. These frameworks define the appearance of your app. They also provide the basic app infrastructure and support for key technologies such as multitasking, touch-based input, push notifications, and many high-level system services. When designing your apps, you should investigate the, these technologies first. Um, basically, you should investigate the technologies in this layer first to see if they meet your uh, needs before going to the other layers. The media layer contains the graphics, audio, and video technologies you use to implement multimedia experiences in your app. The technologies in this layer makes it easy for you to build apps that look and sound great. The core services layer contains fundamental system services for apps like the core foundation and foundation frameworks. This layer also contains individual technologies to support features such as location, iCloud, social media, and networking. The core OS layer contains the low level features that most other technologies are built upon. Even if you do not use these technologies directly in your apps, they are most likely being used by the other frameworks. You use the frameworks in this layer in situations where you need to explicitly deal with security or communicating with an external hardware accessory. iOS apps are sophisticated interplay between your custom code and the system frameworks. The system frameworks provide the basic infrastructure that all apps need to run. And you provide the code required to customize that infrastructure and give the app the look and feel that you want or based on your business, uh, which includes changing the color, the UI, the UX, and other such things. iOS apps are C-based apps, and as every C-based app, the entry point of an iOS app is the main function. What is different is that for iOS apps, you do not write the main function yourself. Instead, the ID that we use, which is Xcode, creates this function as part of your basic project. The only thing to mention about the main function is that its job is to hand control off to the UI kit framework where the UI application main function handles this process by creating the core objects of your app. It also loads your app's user interface, calls your custom code, and you know, so that you can have a chance to do some initial setup and puts the app's run loop in motion. So the only pieces that you have to provide are the views and the custom initialization code. An app's main run loop processes all user related events. The UI application object sets up the main run loop at launch time and uses it to process events and handle updates to view-based interfaces. The main run loop executes on the app's main thread. This behavior ensures that user-related events are processed serially in the order in which they are received. As the user interacts with the device, events related to those interactions are generated by the system and delivered to the app via special port set up by the UI kit. Events are queued internally by the app and dispatched one by one to the main run loop for execution. The UI application object is the first object to receive the event and make the decision about what needs to be done. A touch event is usually dispatched to the main window object, which, is, which in turn dispatches it to the view in which the touch occurred. iOS apps use a model view controller architecture. What this pattern does is that it separates the app's data and business logic from its view. There also exist other architectures like MVVM, which is model view, view model, MVP, which is model view presenter, and Viper, uh, which also prove useful based on the type of app you are building. At any given moment, your app is in one of the following listed states. 
which is not running, inactive, active, background or suspended. The system moves your app from state to state in response to actions happening throughout the system. For example, when the user presses the home button or if a phone call comes in, the currently running apps change the state in response. Um, when the app has not been launched or if it was set terminated by the system, it is in the not running state. Inactive state is when the app is running in the foreground but is currently not receiving events. An app usually stays in this state only briefly as it transitions to a different state. When the app is in the active state, it is running in the foreground and is receiving events. This is the normal mode for foreground apps. When the app is in the background and executing code, it is said to be in the background state. Most apps enter this state briefly on their way to being suspended. However, an app that requests extra execution time may remain in this state for a period of time. In addition, an app being launched directly into the background enters the state instead of the inactive state. Uh, finally, we have the suspended state in which the app is in the background, but it is not executing code. The system moves the app to this state automatically and does not not notify them before doing so. While suspended, an app remains in memory, but does not execute any code. When a low memory condition occurs, the system may purge uh, suspended apps without notice to make more space for foreground apps. The app delegate. The app delegate creates the window where your app's content is drawn and provides a place to respond to state transitions within the app. The app delegate is where the entry point to your app and the run loop is created. This work is done by the UI application main attribute which is accessed in the app delegate. To develop iOS apps using the latest technologies, you need a Mac computer which is running on Mac OS 10.11.5 or later and running the latest version of Xcode. Xcode includes all the features you need to design, develop, and debug an app. Xcode also includes the iOS SDK, which extends Xcode to include the tools, compilers, frameworks, and uh, all the other things that you need specifically for iOS development. Uh, you can download the latest version of Xcode on your Mac from the App Store. The Xcode only runs on a Mac, hence it's uh, not possible to develop iOS applications on, any, on anything but a Mac computer. With this, we come to the end of this module. Um, through this module, we've gotten a better understanding of the iOS platform. We have looked at specific fun uh, iOS application fundamentals and had a look at the tools required to develop iOS apps.